celebrate my mom's life, uh, Peggy Juanita Malky, 90 years old, 36 years of marriage to my namesake, my dad, Chris Malky, five kids, 12 grandkids, 36 years of marriage. We moved probably a dozen times when I was a kid, um, but the family always stuck together and what she taught me was perseverance, love of music, acceptance of all people and um, a faith that everything was going to be all right. Here are some people talking about it. Enjoy. Juanita, Peggy, Mulkey. So mom must have been like three or four years old. I think they're, she's probably four there, right? And this is in Chicago, probably around Oak Park, right? So what, what's your impression of mom? What did she, like, did she have an overriding philosophy that she imparted on you as far as life? There's a few of them, but one in particular was, it's none of my business. <laughs> um, not necessarily me, but her, mom. Like, mom thought that it's none of my business. Like, when, you know, you came to her and you had, like, something you wanted to talk to her about, it was sort of like she would listen to a certain point and then go... I know you'll be able to take care of it. Peggy Mulkey was one of my all-time favorite people on the planet. My mother died when I was quite young, and Peggy was just such a great mother. She actually adopted me as an honorary son in her family. And all of those years that we spent together, for I've known Chris for over 50 years, um, she was always so happy to see me and always so welcoming and funny and uh, a wicked sense of humor and always a beer in the refrigerator for you if you came over to visit. This, I'm going to flip to the other side, was in 1962 at our home on Portland Avenue in St. Paul, right? And our whole family's here, Dad, Bill, Juanita, Chris and Diane, Mom's taking the photo. And it's just really was beautiful for me to, it was almost like a legacy piece that she gave me. Obviously she had it in her wallet since 1962 after she developed it. And it was just kind of symbolic, I, not kind of, I think it was symbolic in a way, kind of holding our family in a really beautiful place. I'm Juanita Mulkey Lou and I'm Juanita Martin Mulkey's second daughter and her namesake that you don't do and look and act like other other folks um, help me be who I am, which is a meditation and Nui Gong um, instructor and healer. And help me find my, you know, husband and teacher, Sherky Lu. The other part is her sense of humor, which and acceptance of others. Um, we all, I'm sure, will agree she was very funny and liked a good laugh. <laughs> and the longer and louder, the better. Let me ask you this. What would happen at the dinner table if someone started laughing during dinner? Oh, my God. Everybody would snicker. First, it would start with a snicker. And then it would just go around to each and every. And then just everyone would start crying and laughing on the floor, hysterically laughing. And then Dad would get mad. <laughs> He'd tell everybody to be quiet and eat. But he would get mad, and then he would start <laughs> and laughing. And then he would start laughing, and then it would start all over again. And, yeah, and we did. We had so much fun as a family. It was lovely. Yeah, and our moves, you know, just her uh, elasticity um, with moving as much as we did. She did, we did, in our lives made us um, stronger, 
uh, again, more accepting people. And I think that helped all of us um, in our lives. The other thing was that, that she remade herself as from um, in her generation, a woman at home with children as a house maker, keeper, um, to going on and, and um, re-educating herself and becoming the registrar of a small college in, in St. Paul, Minnesota. And she loved that. She really did. It wasn't just necessity. She loved that. But it was enough socializing for her and jokes and efficiency and all those good things. You know, an observation when I was older, I mean, that she lived alone for so many years, over 30 years after my fa our father passed away. And how she did that. Grandma, I think it was like at least seven years of this, she would take me upstairs into the bedroom where Lizzie and I always slept, which was like the, it was like, I feel like it had pink walls. She'd go into that closet and that's where she kept like her cruise ship dresses, like the, like her fancy dresses, the storage stuff. And she'd pull out this green, sequin beaded dress and she said this is what I want you to bury me in and then I'd be like okay grandma that's morbid but whatever <laughs> and we'd have a laugh when we'd be looking at dresses and uh, we always connected in that way like a decade later after the first time we did that she she passed away and we were all back at the house and I was sorting through the photos uh, I overheard one auntie be like what are we gonna bury her and I don't know and I'm like how do you not know? It's the green dress. She's told me a dozen times. Is the, did you not have this conversation with her? I don't know how it worked out, but she ended up in the green dress. And so we're in St. Rose of Lima and I'm walking up to her casket. She's so important to me. Um, she also used to say when she'd show me, you know, we have a very special relationship <laughs> to like let me know that I was in the club. Like I was, that she, I was beloved, which was, you know, the wink and the smile from Grandma Peg that is, you know, makes you feel like you, you know, shit shun, sunshine. But um, anyway, so I was walking up to the coffin and I it was like, I hate this moment. I didn't like it when Grandma and Eileen died. I didn't like it when Grandpa died. Is this going to be okay? And I walk up to her coffin and she is wearing the dress and she looks so good in it. And she's dead there she is her dead body but she is in the dress and i'm like you're in the dress and i had this last moment with her that was exactly as she'd wanted it it was a laugh it was joyful it was like she was getting what she wanted she looked fierce you know like she, it was it was exactly her personality this might have been where she was with the USO because they're all in the same outfits, right? And they have these little pins and actually she gave me her little V pin. It's like for victory. And that's in my jewelry box at home. But yeah, she was really proud that she did this with all the all the other women and supporting the cause in the war. You know, she often talked about like hats and gloves and, you know, dressing and the dressing the nines to go out and how women never did that. They, you know, they always had to go out with hats and gloves and this is just such a great photo of her. And she loved dogs at a distance. <laughs> See, here they are, hats and gloves. Oh my gosh, and they look so dapper. And look, Aunt Betty's making a goofy face. So that's Aunt Betty and our mom. And mom, Peg. yeah, mom Peg. Yeah, Peggy's voice, it, it reverberates in my head. She had a, a lot of energy, a lot of spark. Hello, George! <laughs> she was upbeat. She really had an upbeat attitude about life. Life was good. Life was definitely good. Spark. She had a spark about life. Okay, my favorite thing about my grandma was sitting on the carpet with her playing Kings in the Corner. And why that's important is that she just took the time just to be with us and play this silly game, obviously for Mike and Ike's or Penny's, so there was some kind of incentive. And um, that showed to me her willingness just to be still with us. She was always just really present with us. Um, and I think that means so much to our nervous systems, just to sit and play a funny, silly game um, and just be together. And of course we were on the floor all the time because she was a flexible lady forever and always because she danced 
forever and always. I know she had a performance career when she was younger, but then when she was older, dancing in the kitchen with family, her husband, dancing um, at parties, dancing just because in between things. <laughs> and she, you know, of course took line dancing until she was 90. And what that did for me um, was to teach me the love of your art and love of movement for you, for your soul, for your community and culture that it can become something beautiful and bigger as an art that you expand, but to always make sure you have this love of expression through your body um, and with one another was so, so beautiful. And this is how they danced. My mom and dad 